We've made it into pit water last night. It wasn't easy. <laughs> so that um, those 50 knot gusts, they sort of continued into the night. So as we were as we were trying to come into pit water, of course we had to go west, and the wind was straight on the nose. So we tacked our way in. It was it was pretty difficult. Got a fair bit of salt spray. Looking at the wet weather gear. So I think um, I think Pascal and I are just going to have a bit of a rest today. I know I need it, and then we're going to have a bit of a look around. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30 foot, 50 year old sailing boat, Marul. After a day of rest on the boat, we went ashore to take a look around and meet some of the locals. I think she might be a fair bit older than me, this old tree. <laughs> A short walk from our mooring at the basin were some Aboriginal engravings. These engravings were made by Aboriginal Australians as early as 3,000 years ago. A sign at the site indicated that these engravings of human figures were probably made by tracing shadows. Trying to sail out of the moorings, but <laughs> wind shadow. Are you beating the four, four knot minimum, maximum? <laughs> Hang on. Oh, four knots, that's oh. it. That's it. <laughs> Slow down. This, um, when you see that four wake, uh, four knot rule, they'll give you a direction as to prevent wake from rocking the boats. Mm. Look at the wake that Marul leaves. Nothing. <laughs> we leave flat water behind us. Yeah. So where are we off to, Skipper? We're going to go around the corner and find a waterfall. How does that make you feel? Pretty cool, pretty good. much speed. Huh? I don't think we lost much speed. We didn't lose a mast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing is, you know, like we don't really have our sails set as efficiently as we could just because we're just chilling out.
place has got a little bit of a Kimberley vibe. It's just a lot more people. It looks like the old local local oysters have been getting it in the neck a bit. Mm. Not sure about the fishing situation yet either. Time to go wash the wet weather gear. <laughs> Not bad, hey? <laughs> Rain water wash or fresh water wash? I actually thought it was going to be a lot colder. Like, I'm a bit of a sook about it. Mm. Oh, well, brings back memories of the Kimberleys, eh? It does. It looks like the Kimberleys and there's waterfalls. There's not as much fish. Not as much fish. There's a few more plants. A few more people? There's a couple more jet skis. <laughs> I've enough jet skis for the Kimberleys or thing. <laughs> The shoreline around Pitwater is perfect for sampling local seaweed. As a general rule, anything thicker than hair is safe to eat, but may not necessarily be palatable. And you can eat this one too, can't you? It's just you got to cook it. You can eat them all. Oh, I think I've seen this in cooking. There are some exceptions to the rule, but they taste incredibly bad. It's good. So we're on our way into Brisbane water. We're gonna have a little bit of a gathering to celebrate Maril's birthday in Gosford in a couple of days. So we wanted to come in today because the wind, there's no wind yet, but it's gonna be picking up really strong from the Northeast over the coming days. And we didn't wanna try and get in through this quite tight passage with a strong wind blowing like straight on the nose. So yeah, we're doing it now. It's really beautiful and so far so good, really calm and we've, across the shallowest bit. Um, they're dredging at the moment because it does get quite shallow here. It silts up a lot. The track is a small dog. No small lag. This is serious. What's the uh, the shallowest you've seen on the sounder? When that big ferry came past, we sort of had to go up into, you know, like a metre, but I, I could see that the shallows were just there, you know, like an arms arm's length away we really hug that contour. I guess see here there's like these green um, these green boys up here they really extend out quite some way and you have to go around and a bit of a rip going on over this this bank here. Drift yachting. Drift yachting. <laughs> What's that? What's the height of this bridge? 17 metres. You can see it's actually printed on the bridge, the narrow. What's she saying? One metre. That's good. 
good. And I'm feeling so depressed. I just need a little rest. So we've made it to Gosford. We're at the top of Brisbane Waters. I didn't eat, I, I don't know why, but I just sort of, I saw a big lake and I just thought it would be flat here, but it's not. This must have been like a flooded valley. There's lots of hills and it's a pretty picturesque old town. It had been a little while since we'd provision rule and we were really excited to be in Gosford because we'd heard it had a fantastic farmer's market. So what are we getting, Pascal? Uh, we're going to get some free-range duck eggs. Free-range duck eggs? Are they all Muscovies? Uh, yes. Yeah. So they'll be... Um... Definitely free-range. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the markets uh, in Gosford, the it, farmer's markets. It took us a little while to find a spot away from the crowds because it's a, a pretty busy day. Um, but why do, we, why do we come to growers' markets, Pascal? Uh, we come to growers' markets because, well, we love chatting with farmers, but also because um, we the fruit and veg just comes straight off the farm. It hasn't been refrigerated in trucks or anything like that, so we can put it straight on the shelf and it lasts a couple of weeks like that. Because as you know, we've only got a 40 litre angle, so we don't have room to put fruit and veg in our fridge. It's really important to get the freshest fruit and veg that we can. Yeah, that's something we've definitely found that if you can if you can avoid having things refrigerated in transport before it gets to you. It's a lot better for, um, as boat provisions. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So we, we've had pumpkins that look beautiful that have come off a refrigerated barge, and within two days, pumpkins just having a meltdown like a science fiction movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nasty. Um, so, what do. And also, we love getting eggs as well. If you know about us, you know that we love our eggs. So. What did, we got some duck eggs. We got some duck eggs. Um, we just bought some eggs from one of the farmers. We'll probably try another dozen from someone else. Um, we're on the hunt for some that have been unrefrigerated because the duck eggs weren't refrigerated, but the mm. chicken eggs were. So we're going to look for some that are, are not refrigerated. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So this is this is basically more of our short-term provisioning rather than our like four-month provisioning. Yeah. So fruit, um, lots of fresh vegetables, things like that, stuff to keep us happy and healthy. Yeah. What's the sailor's least favourite vegetable? One of the really nice things about what we do, people ask, oh, what do you get out of free range sailing? And they, they always think it maybe it's a financial thing, but there's a lot of intangibles. And one of them is when we get into ports, we always have friends, ready-made friends um, waiting there. And some particularly nice friends here in Gosford, Ingrid and Dave, or Crowey, they lent us a Subaru WRX to do our shopping. <laughs> now, I might be showing my age a little bit for Australian viewers, but this WRX, what it feels like, is in my younger days, you know, little race modified Dats and 1600s were all the rage, you know. This feels like that on steroids. And this, uh, we're trying to drive it conservatively because it's not our car. But it's, <laughs> you know you want to. It's incredibly hard. So what do we need to get here? Tea? Uh, tea, coffee, milk powder, uh, cheese, and nuts. Nuts and dried fruit. So most of the time we try and get stuff from the um, from the farmers market, but there's a few things that we just get from the supermarket. Yeah. Hopefully stuff that doesn't have too much packaging. So we like to make our own yogurt on the boat, but every now and then the culture will run out. And what that means is you'll get other bacteria and stuff in there. 
and it'll still make yogurt but it'll start tasting a bit funky. So it's really easy, all you come and do is just buy a new batch, a little small yogurt and start the strain over again. Um, and if we maintain pretty good hygiene we can normally get put it somewhere between 5 and 10 new cultures before it starts tasting yeah. a bit, little bit weird. Yeah, we can make about 10 batches from one little pot of yogurt like this. But we need to get some more milk powder. Yes. One of the other jobs was we had to do our laundry. <laughs> Oh, I can't see it. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even get that one. There. All right, you're gonna have to do that again. It's the flick that I didn't get filmed because you go to you went high up to do it. It is steamy. I think we're expecting a storm in the next couple of hours, so it's good that we got everything done this morning. Lucky you haven't got far to row. It's a little bit tropical, isn't it? Woof! This is casual rowing. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Also when subscribing to Free Range Sailing remember to hit the bell button to stay notified of all our upcoming releases. I'm gonna get you to find